Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled RAC Simulation by PSPICE, E Laplace, or G Laplace. Let me, first of all, describe the background of this problem. We know that at high frequency, when there is a current passing through a conductor, say a copper wire, there is this skin effect, which means that the charge carriers are being pushed into the outer rim of the wire. That is, the charge carriers are located here at this thickness of delta, which can be expressed here approximately for copper at 25 degrees as 72 times square root of frequency, frequency in hertz, and delta is will be in millimeter. So the total resistance is actually split into two resistances, one for the DC, which is uh, dependent on the cross-section area of the wire, the total cross-section, while there is an RAC in which we have only this area here. So obviously the area here is smaller, so and if there is a current passing through this wire composed of both DC and AC, then the power dissipated uh, in the section will be dependent on the DC part times RDC and the RMS of the AC component uh, at a given frequency times RAC. Now, therefore, the ratio between RAC and RDC is a function like this. It's a square root of F and in this case dependent on the geometrical consideration. So we can express RAC as RDC uh, times uh, this uh, square root of uh, F and therefore the total which is RDC plus RAC is something like this. We have a RDC times 1 plus uh, this function here. Now in a log log scale we can plot it approximately this is a asymptotic uh, curve of course uh, we can plot it in this fashion we have here the total resistance log scale frequency log scale here is a straight line up to this point and then we have a break point and then there is a rise and the slope here is 0.5 because of course we have this uh, square root of f now we have measured uh, such resistances, here's in one example. This is a copper wire wrapped around a plastic uh, piece here, a thin piece so that the inductance will be small. And then we've used the Omicron Body 100, it's a network analyzer which has a impedance measurement fixture, here it is, this fixture here, to which we have connected the wire, here's the wire. and Here's what we got. Now this blue one is the inductance, it's uh, below uh, one microhenry. And then we have the resistance, this is the resistance as a function of frequency, it's a log scale here. And the slope here, if you take it at the middle, is a symptotic value, it's about 0.5 as we would expect, and the breakpoint is sort of uh, one megahertz. So this is as expected from the theory. And the question that I'm now asking is, how can we simulate in SPICE or PSPICE, say, as an example, uh, this resistance, which is the function of frequency. Now, this is a resistance, meaning that the phase is zero, that is not reactive, it's resistive, but the value is changing with frequency. So to begin with, and we observe that when we look at this function that I've plotted here, which has a breakpoint here as f sub beta, this is very much like a zero body plot of a zero, except that the slope is 0.5 and not 1. So therefore, we can express this thing here as 1 plus s, this is the Laplace transform, a variable, over 2 pi fb, this is the omega, okay, breakpoint here. But it'll be to the power of 0.5 rather than 1 in a regular zero. And this is just the um, coefficient here, or this is this, this value here. So it boils down to the question, how can we simulate something of this nature 
uh, in spice or p spice as an example but obviously once uh, we can do it in spice it will be uh, possible to do it in many other software programs which are based on uh, spice to do that we can use the built-in analog behavioral model that spice has which is the g laplace or e laplace now the difference between these two is that the g laplace has an output of a current source while the e laplace has an output of a voltage source okay so it's just a question of what's the nature of the output uh, terminal now the these two units blocks behave like this we have an output this is the output current or voltage which is dependent on the input say here's the input or here's the input which would be voltage here voltage input times a function that I can write in a Laplace function that I can write in now notice however that although we have these two input terminals we don't have to use them um, if we use them then this expression here is like this this means that these are the input terminal this uh, percentage uh, in plus and in minus means that this is the voltage of these terminals but we can actually show them and put here any expression we want we just click on this or this and then write whatever expression we want and this expression could refer to any voltage in the circuit that we are running any node the voltage of a node of the circuit or could be a current through a component so as i've said it's not necessary to use this and you can just short it and uh, this would mean in this case that the output here which will be in this case a voltage will depend on the input this is this v node the voltage of this node times a laplace function now we put a laplace function by double clicking it here and then we get this window here now this window has first of all also the input which we can change we can actually change it here or we can double click here uh, on the schematics itself and then in the window uh, change it to whatever we want but then we have it here this uh, laplace uh, transform equation that we put or we can put now default here is 1 over s now we can have it uh, displayed here at the output by double clicking it and then you get this window and you say name and value and that will be uh, meaning that it should be displayed here and by clicking the ok uh, I get now this transform and 1 over s this will be the default but again I can click on it or in the previous window I can erase and write whatever I want for example I've written here 1 over s times 10 micro plus 1 and then when clicking ok I'll get it here at the output so now this unit now will produce an output which is the input voltage in this case I haven't replaced it times this expression Laplace form okay now when you have a unit in spice or p-spice and it is a true spice compatible element then it has to be capable of running both in AC analysis which is a phasor analysis of a linear circuit phasor analysis by definition for a linear circuit and in fact if your circuit is not linear uh, spice will linearize it for you and you get a linear circuit another analysis is the transient or time domain analysis in which actually there is a numerical solution of low linear differential equation taking uh, care of by the algorithm that uh, spice has built in so now for the ac analysis the phasor analysis for the laplace expression there's no problem of course you just replace s by j omega j 2 pi f this is 5 
and uh, then just run it. It'll be compatible with the phase run analysis. Tricky, however, is the question, how do you accomplish or how does SPICE, PSPICE accomplish time domain analysis of an expression in the uh, Laplace transform? Now, obviously, um, SPICE cannot solve analytically um, Laplace transform expression. So it is, has to be done in a num numerical way. So the way it is done is the following. First of all, the expression is uh, converted to J omega, J omega by replacing S with J omega. Then SPICE is getting the impulse response of this expression. And then it runs a transient analysis of the system. And then it calculates the convolution between the step or the impulse response of the function and the rest of the circuit to get the time domain solution. Okay, so it's a rather complicated procedure which is transparent to the user uh, once you start running the time domain analysis, uh, you see that there is a certain pause in which this uh, impulse response is being calculated, and then only then you'll start getting uh, the output as the convolution is being executed. Now, convolution, of course, is uh, a product of the two functions. Convolution, say, this is the function, this is the impulse response, say, and this is the system, and then this is the integral uh, of this product while the time in one of them is swept from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay, so this is how SPICE is getting the time domain solution uh, to a system which co contains Laplace transform expression. We need one additional tool here and that is how to express a resistor which is non-constant depending on something, okay? It's a variable resistor, in this case a function of some variable. We need it because we need to generate or express a resistor which is a function of frequency, okay? So let's see how we do it in general. Now we can represent a resistor by a current source which is defined as the voltage across this current source divided by this function, which is the resistance. Now, this could be a fixed resistor, like if it'll be like R here, then this will be a resistor of value R, or it could be some other function, depending on something else. For example, suppose I like to represent a variable resistance which is dependent on the current through it with this function, 5i squared, okay? So, I have a current source defined as the voltage across it divided by the function. Now, conveniently, we put a voltage source of value zero just for sensing the current because then I can write I of V1, which means that the current flowing through this voltage source into the plus terminal. This is the convention of SPICE. And then therefore, this function 5I V1 square is five times the current through this thing, which is by definition thin. And this is therefore, this model or simulation model is representing this dependent resistance. Now we go back to our problem. We have a resistor, which is a function of frequency. This is the function, and we are expressing this function as a Laplace transform expression with a power of 0.5 because of the slope here. This is the DC value, okay? And we need to take the absolute value. So now with all what I've said before, we can just go ahead and do it by generating here a G Laplace element. The input is the voltage across it. Notice that I've shorted out these two connected to ground and the input is V of F1 
F2, this is this voltage here. And the expression now, the Laplace expression, is this expression here, which I've written here. So the current is the voltage divided by 300 milliohm, this is 300 milliohm, times the absolute value of one microsecond plus one to the power of 0.5. Now, I've omitted here a two pi, which should, I should have put in because the breakpoint was actually one megahertz, but here it should be omega, but let's forget about this. This is just a general description here. And here I have the same thing, except that I have not put the Laplace expression at all, only a fixed value, 300 milliohm, so that uh, uh, this should be a fixed resistor of 300 milliohm. And here is what we're getting in an AC analysis. This is the, the unit which has no frequency dependence, 300 milliohm. This is frequency. This is now the RAC plus RDC. This is a straight line. This is this slope here. And the phase of this thing is zero. This is zero here. So that indeed we have now a element, the resistance being a function of frequency, but no phase shift as we need it. Now, if we look now at a say, voltage divider between here and here, it's a one ohm resistor, then you see that uh, the, there's attenuation at high frequency because this uh, RAC is becoming larger and therefore the attenuation is increasing. And while in the case of the RDC, and this is here, there's no change of course because this is a fixed resistor. Now we can also look at the power dissipation. This is for say one amp power. And you see that for RDC, the power dissipation is not frequency dependent. And while here, of course, since the RAC is going up, it's frequency dependent. Now, of course, of interest is the time domain. As I've said, it's a rather elaborate calculation that uh, SPICE or PSPICE is doing here. And this is what I've got. This is for RDC, this is for the resistance itself without frequency dependent and here is the frequency dependent and you can see that there is a effect on the slope as we would expect there's some change here there's some change here which i cannot explain now perhaps uh, this needs some more trimming here because perhaps the length of the segment or the uh, resolution of the calculation is affecting this uh, I cannot explain exactly what is going on here, except for the fact that it's different, which is clearly it should be. But uh, again, the very fine details here uh, need to be looked at uh, a little bit farther. This is now a expanded scale of the same thing. See here the effect of the rise time and then this, this wiggle here, which I can't explain. And this is what I'm getting in the time domain. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it'll be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.